There we are. I think we're live. We are live. Yay, we're live. Teresa Lynn <laughs> Coates. It's me. TLC. <laughs> it's so Together Tuesday. I'm Teresa Coates. I'm the National Educator for Shannon Fabrics. And we are back again. It's so Together Tuesday in, on the road. We are in Richmond, Virginia. Um, very excited. Today we're going to be talking about embroidery. So that's why I wanted him to show this. Um, we'll talk more about my initials and why they're on everything in just a minute. But <laughs> we want to talk about embroidery, especially on Lux Cuddle. So we've talked about embroidery on Cuddle before, but today we're kind of going to do a little bit different and talk more about the Lux Cuddle way of doing it because it's slightly different than doing it on regular Cuddle. Okay. Just a few little extra things that we have to do. Um, so thanks for joining us. We're very excited you're here. Please make sure and share the video. Like I remember talk. Okay. <laughs> OMG TLC. You'll, you'll be entered to win. I always forget a kit. So we'll give away a kit at the nice. end of the show. So make sure that you share it on Facebook with your favorite sewing group or your sewing friends, that sort of thing. Okay. Share the video. We'll draw um, a winner at the end and you will receive a beginner box kit, which is a fun little kit. You guys don't happen to have those, do you? Dang it. We'll get them. Okay. She'll get them. But right now, I have one in the car, in the RV, that I could show you. It's a great kit. We're going to give one away at the end. It has three one-yard cuts in it, and you can make six different projects out of it. So it's a great one, especially if you are new to sewing with cuddle, but also if you're just, you know, like sewing with cuddle. So there you go. So let's share the video. Otherwise, is there anything I had to share? I don't think so. We had a TikTok giveaway that has ended. So if you want to know who the winners are, they've been notified on TikTok, so make sure that you head over there and follow us there. We're also on Twitch now, and you can subscribe on YouTube as well, um, and then you'll make sure and get notifications for all of the um, the lives when we go live. All right, so you can do that on Facebook, YouTube, all that good stuff. Is that it? I think we're good. Let's do a I show. I on here. I'm like, all right, let's do this. So we are on the road. We are doing the East Coast tour. We're heading up the coast. Um, so you saw us last, right? The last we were in, oh, we were in the RV park um, last week. I don't know where we were actually. I can't remember. We were in the RV park. <laughs> we were in the RV. <laughs> it's so hard to keep I track of we where we were. We were in Greensboro. That's right. And so we did a live from the RV last week and talked about ourselves and what we're doing and all that, that good stuff. So if you are new to Sew Together Tuesday and you're like, what the heck are they doing? That's a great one to watch. That's from last week. The week before, we were in Asheville at Five Little Monkeys. So we're kind of doing this thing. We're going to head up. So now we're in Richmond, Virginia, or a suburb of Richmond, Virginia, at a place called bobbin and bolt so we are here you guys are a new shop right yeah. okay so we're here with lucy come on in we'll have you stand by me okay <laughs> so this is lucy you're the owner with your husband is that correct my um i own the shop with my business partner jennifer who got it couldn't make it today but she says hello to everybody there you go yes. see so yeah. i know there's always like these ownership things and i never can keep track husband, of it uh, just came on recently he's a bernina tech oh so got it so that's why he's here yeah. it's because yeah. he does work with you guys yes. okay <laughs> nice so when did you guys open the store we opened in the middle of the pandemic that's what i thought <laughs> we had the plan before it shut down uh -huh. we said full steam ahead people are going to need to sew they're going to want to be home they're going to yep. need their machines cleaned so we opened our doors july 1st of 2020 that's and we have crazy. been blessed ever since with wonderful customer base and Lots of fabric. That is awesome. So yeah, all sorts of, we were just talking before the show, like started about all the things that have happened like yep. because of the pandemic. And I think probably there's some differences in your business because of yes. it. So. And everyone said we were crazy. We said, <laughs> we'll show you. Here we go. Um, and here we you are. Know, and we were able to adapt to those new things about COVID with right. the shipping delays and virtual classes mm -hmm. and all of that. We didn't have to do a switchover. We could just right. jump in new. Yeah. And figure it out. So that is awesome. Here we are. That is awesome. Super cool. So we are here. You guys have a lot of embroidery stuff, which is kind of why we're doing this because mm -hmm. you guys specialize in that and you sell machines. You sell Berninas. Yes. Bernina, right. So we're going to do that. What else makes your shop a little bit special that some of want? to come by and check so, it out um we like to say our little tagline is where everybody knows your name mm -hmm. i've got a wonderful staff experienced staff um we make you feel at home here we're here to help you with your projects we love seeing what you're working on and we pride ourselves on that personalized um, relationship with our customers mm -hmm. um we do have Bernina and Burnett Machines. We're Got the it. only dealer here in Central Virginia. So we're happy to have a full service uh -huh. tech department now so we can take care of everybody's babies. Very um, nice. Very nice. Good selection of batiks and... A lot of cuddle. The cuddle. There's a lot of cuddle. So they got a lot of cuddle, there. which is great. Can you show just a little bit of it? Yeah. Let's see let's, if we uh, can show that. Also, a bunch of Bianni stuff, which I, I like too. Yeah. So a bunch of cuddle all around the bottom of it. 
So you've got kits that are available for the classes that we're doing that people could buy. Yes. So if they're interested, buy. you've got the fabric that we're using today. Yes. Right. And then, oh, yep. I see the kits. And I'm okay. happy to order anything that anybody needs. Yeah. So if you check out their website at bobbinandbolt.com, you'll be able to find all of those kits and all of the fabric that she has. She does have a really nice selection. She has some really cute combinations for the patchwork quilt that we did. Um, last month March I think we did um the patchwork quilt at Granbury so there's actually so if you get the kit for that there is a tutorial for it as well if you're not local and can't take the class um and you have kits for the self-binding blanket yes. and then the throw and then the, yes, and correct ottoman kits as well. we and ottoman as well oh yeah we can send so, you everything also, you need all sorts of things exactly so and we have tutorials for a bunch of those so um so check out her website, see what she's got. And she's also got all the stuff that we're going to talk about today. So today we're really focusing on embroidery. And we are using a fancy new Bernina. So this is the um, Bernina 790 Crystal Edition. I'm going which to come around. I think you got you to show the crystal. Because this is... It's a lot. It's a lot. This is my, my best Vanna. <laughs> <laughs> it is it's sparkly. Bling. It's a little bling. I like it. So what we're talking about today is kind of embroidery. If you're just starting out and you're not really sure what you're doing yet, there's a lot to a lot to embroidery. And we're going to talk today about using kind of the designs from your machine and doing a monogram. So um, I'm going to show show him this guy here. We're going to talk about two different kinds, and we're going to use an actual monogram that's in the machine. We'll talk about all the the bits about that but I just want to show you the different kinds so these are two that um Sheila made so thank you Sheila she is um the person behind um designs by baby moon and she is fabulous and knows her stuff with embroidery so she helped me out with this one I'm excited about it this is kind of the um monogram type that you're most familiar with probably the reason I don't like this is my t and my c look kind of just exactly alike um, so it's really hard to tell what the heck it says. So, <laughs> so TLC, which is actually my initials. So I think it's, you know, it's a fun thing. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so this one I actually like better. So this is something just to, out of the block to talk about is what the initials actually are and how they might play together. Okay. So that's something to kind of figure out which way you like it best. So truthfully, if I were going to do something, I wouldn't do these initials because my T and C look too much alike. That, that, in, that font in particular that is font, not, the, not great the, for your letters. Right. But all the scripty ones that I found are kind of like that. Got so it. for me, the TC thing is, even though they don't look the same over here, they do look very much the same in script. So something to think about. We're going to talk a lot about like things to think about when you're making your own monogram and what you might want to consider while you're doing it. So that's one of them. All right. So we're going to do it in these fabrics. I'm going to show you both sides here because this is a beautiful fabric combination. If, you, um, if you're on the I Love Cuddle group, you've probably seen this snowy owl a lot. And if you're not on the I Love Cuddle group, you should get over there now. It's on Facebook and it's a fun, fun group of people who are always sewing all sorts of things with cuddle. So this is the snowy owl in Elderberry. So Lux Cuddle snowy owl. This is Lux Cuddle uh, hide in elderberry okay super nice all right so i'm going to move these aside i'm going to just throw them on the we have a lot of stuff so we're just going to make a pile over here all right it'll be pretty it's pretty behind me Sorry. all right so let's get started so we're going to talk about stabilizers more after we do this but we're going to start with what we think is the best combination right okay so come on back in um so you sell oesd products yes so there's a whole lot of them available. And we were talking about this a little bit earlier is that there is a ton of different kinds that you can get. And it's really hard to know which ones you should just get first because that's the easiest to start with. So we're going to tell you this. My favorite is the stable stick. Is that what you called it? Stable, stable stick, which is the um, it's sticky. So we'll, we'll cut it and get it sticky on one side and we'll we'll hoop that. And then this is the water soluble stabilizer. So those are the two that I would start with. If I were you, um, I have a whole lot of them, but that's the one that I use the most actually is this sticky. Um, and this is a cutaway, which is yes. important, right? It also comes in tear away, but don't get that. But don't get the tear away. <laughs> we'll talk about why later, but know that you want the cutaway and the, um, the self-adhesive one. Okay. So not the fusible where you're going to have to iron it on. You just want it where it's sticky on it. Okay. So any tricks with hooping this? We'll hoop it first, and then we can score it with the scissors and mm -hmm. rip the paper off. Okay. 
So yeah, nothing. Yeah, open up your, open up the hoop there. I am unfamiliar with this machine. So she's going to help me the whole way because I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. Help me out. <laughs> and you do need to open your hoop wider than you're probably used to um, just because this is a thicker stabilizer than um, your regular stuff. Right. And it's much stiffer. Yeah. That's the one thing that I've found using this is that it's just much, much stiffer. So we'll cut that, we'll put the tape back on so it doesn't unfurl everywhere. Okay. All right. I hope I cut that big enough. Yeah, you know how many times I haven't cut it big enough? <laughs> yeah, a, we'll lot. <laughs> a lot. A we lot. We'll see if we can snap down, it in. And then we can take it. There we go. There we go. All right. So that's in there really nice and tight. And then we're going to screw that down. So there is one thing. So when you're doing this, if you look at it from, you can show the back of it there. That's what the back should look like. Okay. Is that your stabilizer is on the inside. The outside hoop always is on the outside. I've definitely seen people try to hoop it the other way. Yes, like a hand embroidery. Hoop. Yeah. So make sure that you're hooping it the right direction. It'll make a big difference. So we're going to tighten it down really good. So it stays nice and tight. Ooh. One of the things that I know about embroidery, I don't know a ton, but I've learned a lot is that your stabilizer needs to be really tight in there. So it needs to be stable because we're going to not really float it in here, but the fabric isn't in here. So a lot of times in embroidery, you put the fabric in as well as the stabilizer and then you embroider them together. This one, just the stabilizer is in here. Okay. I haven't used this kind before, so I'm hoping I don't cut it. Another great use for the... Uh, my little blade that I love so much. Okay. See if we can get this thing to rip. Because there's going to be some trash. <laughs> Got it. So you just, <laughs> the, that's the backing paper. You just yep. scored it. I just on scored the it. Side. And yeah, that seems like you're going to mess that up the first time. I actually <laughs> haven't. Though. I just don't push right. it hard. So right. surprisingly, I haven't messed that one up. You would think that I would have cut accidentally it through was that. The, it was the royal you, not you in particular. Every, right. You was in and me. You was in me, actually. But I have That's what I meant. Like I would mess that up. <laughs> but, <laughs> there we go. Okay. So now all of this is sticky in here. That's the key is that this is sticky. So if you're not using a sticky one, you could use the um, SF101 in here, would or not the SF101, the OD505 spray. And you could spray this in here, but honestly, it just starts to get your hoop really messy, which is not as much fun. Okay, so now we need to figure out how to center this thing in here. Okay. We didn't really talk about that, but it should be, this would be my 45, because that's my center, line. right? Mm -hmm. And then you can use these two as your side ones. I think it's pretty close to perfect. Yes. Okay, so basically what I'm trying to do is get it so that it will be in here on a 45. So on the corner, my letters will be here. Here's my corner. Okay. So you could measure this more perfectly. That worked for me. <laughs> All right. And then we're using, this is the water soluble from OESD. What do they call it? Stitch, stitch to well. It's stitch got a nice well. tooth to it. So it doesn't um, stick to your presser foot. Right. And then, oh, we didn't have any tape. Do you have um, yep. a little tape we could tape it down with? Okay. So we'll put this on here. This would be my favorite thing to mess up <laughs> and when i say that i really don't mean my favorite it's just the thing i'm really good at is i think i get to this point and then i'm like oh shoot i don't have my tape right here and then i just try to embroider do you remember what this happened the other day huh can i try to embroider like that it was not pretty because then it caught it and it ended oh. up bringing things and it made the whole design get off by about a half an inch oh yeah it broke the needle yeah yeah a bunch of yeah. bad stuff happened so really just tape the stuff down okay so I say that with all the love because honestly, it's where I'm like, oh, it's fine. I can cheat. And then I realize Not every yet. time it teaches me a lesson. <laughs> four, four pieces of tape. Yeah. And I think this last time that was the one that I was like, yeah, that was bad enough that I, I really should do that. Okay. So now I've got the stable stick. Stable stick. Stable stick. Cut away down. I put the fabric down. It's floating. So it's just out here. And then we have the water soluble stabilizer down. Was there right. any consideration to the nap? No, because I don't really do that. Um, no, sometimes I do. You do. Like, 
okay, I lied. I do care. Um, but with this, I'm doing it at the corner. So it doesn't really matter. Truthfully, like and it's hide. So if you really want to be careful, you could pet the whole thing, make sure that you're at the bottom corner, do it like whichever corner you want to be. Yes. It would depend on the, and the, we'll talk about that a little bit later. It really does depend on the fabric that you're using um, because some of them have a lot of nap and they will make a big difference and some of them it doesn't matter. Mostly it's, it's the nap is considered in relationship to where you want the monogram placed on the, the blanket. Yes. It doesn't necessarily change how the embroiderer works. This all would be exactly works. the same. You just got to figure out which corner okay. you want it on. I just grabbed a corner. Got it. Yes. Yes. That's totally true. All right. So we have it. This is always the tricky part for me because then I have this whole big thingamabob that I'm trying to do. So I'm going to feed this through, right? Okay. So now, how does this guy hook on? Oh, there we go. There's that sticky part that it likes to do. Okay. And you squeeze here and connect it. I'm going to let you do that. Then it pops down over those yeah. little two bars. Okay, got it. So this is a um, a dual machine. So you can, right, you can yeah. switch it back to sewing, sewing or embroidery. Or embroidery. Mm -hmm. So we have it set up with the whole embroidery module, super big and fancy. You can also use it just as your sewing machine. Okay. All right. So we've got white thread in there. I wanted to show you the thread. We'll talk a little bit more about this later, but these are a couple of the threads that I found. So we're going to use this. Um, this is isocord. It's a 40 weight embroidery thread. It's really important to use embroidery thread when you're embroidering. It is made differently and it works better. Okay, This is one that if I were going to do a knockdown, which we'll talk about later, I would find a matching one, which this one matches really nicely. It really, that's a... Yeah, that's a but we're going to use this match. one because we want it to stick out. All right, we want to be able to see it. If I do it in this color, we're never going to see the monogram, which might be exactly what you want. I mean, it depends on, you know, really, it, what do you want for it? All right, so come around, and we're going to talk about picking the embroidery. So on the machine, we've got some choices. Obviously, there's some images that we could do, and then mm -hmm. these are letters, right? Mm -hmm. So we have some different kinds of alphabets. We'll talk a little bit more when I have some other samples. I'll show you guys of the different types when it comes out. But what we know is we like a bigger font, right? Right. To hold so down. we know I don't like the TLC in the script. <laughs> the script. <laughs> that doesn't make me happy. So we're going to do it in the big fat one here because I like that. Oh, we could go back. Let me go back. So this one gave us an option of doing this is the same font. This is this way. This is this way. We can change that, though. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. OK, so let's click on here and then we're going to put in my initials. All right. So now I'm here. OK, so it's automated to the smallest hoop for the letters and the size they are now. So okay. we need to fix that and tell it that we're using the large oval hoop, which comes with the machine that's a standard hoop size. Great. And, and then we can, we can kind of see about head. how big it's going to be. Right. Do we have, oh, this is the measurement of how big it's going to be? Yes. yes. Right. So it's going to be an inch. Can we make it bigger than that? Yes. Let's go into information and edit. And then we use the multifunction knob here and resize oh. that to like 25%. Yeah, that sounds good. There we go. 26 yeah, a little bit bigger. There you go. Okay, and then you were telling me that we can actually, probably now that we changed it, we can't do it, but you can change the letters so that they kind of like do a little curve or they can do like a yeah, little circle. Yeah, or do you want to make the L larger? We have we have both those options. We can... Let's... I would put the C in the middle if I wanted to do it that way. Do we want to do that? So Wonder. that's an interesting distinction, right? Like, it's a, right. that's so a conversation about monograms in general, right? Is what order the what order do they go in, mm -hmm. right? So, because if I want to do all of these equal, then it needs to be the TLC. But if I'm going to do it with my middle initial or my last name initial in the middle, do I just hit this and go back? Yep. Or we can that'll oh. resize it. We can okay. just also go in and restart, and that one well, let's do away. that. Okay. So then it would be T C L. Great. Okay, cool. Okay. And we'll do a quick resize. So we have to resize the hoop. So what if I yeah. didn't change that? If I didn't change the hoop size? Would it just when not stitch? When you went to the sewing screen, it would ask you to 
take this off and then put it back on to confirm. It still might Got it. have us just remove it real quick so that the mm -hmm. arm can get into place, but got it, it would recognize it when we got into the sew. Got it. So it wouldn't start mm -hmm. to sew with it and then oh, no, come right no. off the edge. Right. Okay, right. great. So now if I want to fix my C so that it's bigger than the T and the L, what okay. do I do? So we're going to break the three letters apart because it, technically it's a word right now. So we're going to go into our break apart feature, which is special on the um, top of the line Berninas. And now it's broken those into three separate letters. Got it. So, so kind of like layers there, it looks yes. like. So we can move the L and the T a little bit out of the way. And we can go back in and fine tune these. Okay. And then I select the C. So it's on my hand. And this is what happens. <laughs> resize. Let's see. Larger. There we go. Oh, look at that. There we go. Okay. So then if I decided I wanted the T and the L a little bit closer, or a little bit further away, I can kind of just manipulate that on the screen to see yes. what it would look like. Yep. They're Got in it. line right now. So we can just go back to move. Move that in. Oh. And another thing, we probably want it to stitch from the center out. Right. So we can have the C stitch out first. Right now it's going to stitch second. But on this machine, I'm able to rearrange that. Got it. Okay. So can we move the C down just a little bit so that it's centered sure. height-wise too? Oops. Oh. I'm going to make you do all there of these. Things. Great. How's that? Okay. I think that looks cool. Does that look okay, Hawk? Uh, I get very, I have very little dog in this fight. Yeah, it looks great. There we go. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> but you're the one with the art the art degree um <laughs> i just don't, don't know how to anybody. how to sew um okay so this would work for anything that we wanted to sew it on it would just embroider this we talked a little bit yesterday and i know that we're going to talk about that with the other ones is that we might want to make that font a little bit denser right right, right. to cover it because one of the things about cuddle and i can actually show you on this one here is that it likes to kind of pop through and we'll talk about the knockdown stitches, but it kind of likes to come up a little bit sometimes. So if we make this denser and we'll, I'll show you another sample in a bit that it's a real, it's very obvious how it comes up through the fabric. The water soluble stabilizer will help with that. Mm -hmm. But also if we densify, I don't know the right word. Um, the stitches, it'll actually put them stitches closer together. Yes, yes. Okay. So we'll show us how okay. you do that. So let's regroup them to one file. So now it's back to one word and then I can go into the density and I can edit the density. So I want it to be a little bit closer together stitches. Right, so not a crazy big difference, right. but a little bit. And the machine recalculates the stitch count and we can tell even there on screen without zooming in that it's a little bit darker mm -hmm. so we can see more stitches. Right. So that's going to give us a little bit more stitches. So one of the things that I learned from embroidery is that you always want to test it first. Mm -hmm. So I will tell you, we're just doing it on the blanket, but I would suggest that when you do this, that you have some scraps that you do your embroidery on first, get it the way that you want it, then put it on the blanket. Don't think that you're going to get it perfect right out of the gate. Like we have a lot of samples I'm going to show you about how you can get it wrong. And you'll know that by testing it out first. Okay. So please make sure that you test it, figure it out, densify it more. It's not really a word, but I'm going to use it. Um, <laughs> like Take that off, undensify it, um, spread the letters out, whatever. There's all these things that you can manipulate, which is great. But honestly, you can only tell so much on the screen versus when you actually get it on the fabric. So always make sure that you're testing these things out on some scraps. So buy some extra fabric, okay? Um, make your blanket a little smaller, whatever. Okay, so now we've got it. We got it figured out. Okay. How do we make it stitch? All right, let's get out of edit mode. And this, the machine just wants to get in place. So we can leave this in place, just undo it from the unit. And then it wants it back on right away. It's very So demanding. that's what these little pictures, <laughs> it's very demanding. <laughs> do this, do that. Now okay, we're ready to go. So now it's centering it and putting it back where we want it to be. Yeah. Correct? Okay. All right. Are we okay. ready then? Yeah. Let's have it do this. There we go. There we go. All right. All right. So then we just hit the yeah. green button and go. Hits. And we'll let it start and then we can speed up and we'll hold it in. Oh, there you go. 
we're gonna just gonna say that the light on this machine is very bright. So um, oh. it's, it's uh, you know when I'm back up a little further, it blows out. But I think and I'll see also the the stabilizer makes it a little. Glary, oh, it reflects but, the light okay. really well. I can, in, in here, we're good. Yeah, if you can turn it down slightly, mm -hmm. that'll be great. All right, now that we're going, speed it up a little bit. Okay, so you just you just actually the just add the plus minus mm -hmm. on the fly. You can crank up the speed. This, the stitch speed. Nice. And one of the things that I know from talking with other embroiderers about using it with cuddle is that faster is not always better. So don't crank the speed all the way up to go as fast as you possibly can. It's kind of like sewing with cuddle in general is taking your time with it. Won't let it stretch and move and do all the dumb things that it will kind of want to do. So do I need to worry about all of this over here that's behind the machine? We need got to, like, it out of the way. Um, if the hoop were bigger or the fabric piece were larger, like if this were the full box row size, yep. I would really recommend those jumbo wonder clips. Oh, okay. Roll it and keep it. Because um, sometimes if you're doing a really intricate design, your hoop's moving in all different directions, it'll pick up a corner and then you'll look and there got it. Got it. Back. Uh, oh, got it. Oh, sewn into yeah. It. So wonder clips are awesome for that. Great. Okay. That's kind of what I was wondering, because I know uh, one of the first bits of advice that I got about it was don't walk away. <laughs> and I learned this over and over again. It's sort of like using the stabilizer. Or not job. learn it over it's and like over. I just, Yeah, I have to be retaught over and over again. Um, so you can see how dense those stitches are. That's really nice. What needle but are we using? We're just using the regular. And in this case, we're not using the stretch needle. We're not using the stretch needle. We're using an embroidery needle. And one of the reasons why that works probably is because we're using the stabilizer. Yeah, and it's just it's a different function. So the embroidery um, needle will work better with the embroidery um, function. Like it's piercing more. And the thread, like those two work together. Yeah. You see it. <laughs> it's okay. It should be back in a second. It's back on my end. Yeah, we'll keep our fingers crossed. It did a little, a little thing. Let's see if are we completely out of the stream? I don't know. I'm trying to check. It is totally on. I'm gonna remove you and put you back. Let's see. Put your screw. Put your put your camera up for a second. Okay. And then I'll have to probably close the browser and start again. Nope. Your Are you seeing comments off. from people? It's in and out. So I can hear you. Okay. We're trying. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to add this to the stream. Okay. Okay, you're going to run the audio. There we go. I'm okay. Gonna, I'm going to take me completely out of the So screen. he's going to try to redo it. Seems like it froze. So we're over here just embroidering, taking our time. Like you can see it moving the, the computer here. <laughs> <laughs> I will say it's not shaking too badly, though. Like TBH. Okay. You'll get ready to mute my camera. Okay. There we go. <laughs> All right. It's just a question, are we? We'll just keep manipulating things. All right. Great. So when somebody asked if we decide on the particular needle, it is a embroidery 90. 9014 embroidery needle. Yeah. Okay, which we'll have, we've talked about the needles before and they have like a different scarf and a different hole size and all of that. And that's specifically for both the embroidery and the thread. So the, so what we're doing and the thread we're using. 
<laughs> All right. It is magic. We came back and everything's done. <laughs> Look at that. Ta -da! That's great. Okay, so it embroidered the whole thing. Now we're just going to take it out, yeah. correct? So just squeeze. Okay, so that was a super facile embroidery, which I love. Um, I will say one of the first embroideries I did was like a fancy picture. And I was like, oh, this will be amazing. And so I, I put it in and I started it. And about an hour and a half later, I was finished. Um, because it was like all of these different colors and blah, blah, blah. And like having to do all this stuff and like changing the re-threading it was really the thing that took me the longest. So it's kind of, I'm like, oh, it's just it was so quick. Okay. So it depends on how, how uh, extensive your embroidery is. But I know I definitely was in that in that group of people who were like, oh, you just stick it in and it's magic. Um, it's not. OK, <laughs> it was just magic because we lost our feet for a second. OK, so now we just take this apart. Right. All right. So let's do that. So I'm going to take this out and then we'll um, discuss it. That was so easy. And so what, what hoop sizes come with this machine? This comes with the three standard smallest hoops. So mm -hmm. the, this is the largest one that comes with it, the okay. five by seven large oval, um, and then a medium four by six and a small two by three, good for onesies, things like Got that. Got it, okay. Um, and then there are four other hoops that will fit this machine that are available for purchase. Got it, very cool. And what's the biggest one that you can uh, get the then? The biggest one is the jumbo hoop and the maxi hoop. So they go up to like 15 inches. Nice, so nice. It'll take so really, time. yeah, so that's something, if you're new to embroidery, make sure that you're taking note of what your embroidery hoop size is because that will make a big difference on which embroidery designs you can do. So if your embroidery design is too big for a hoop that you have, you can't actually make it. So make sure that you're um, taking care to note that. And also embroidery files differ by embroidery machine. This is a Bernina, so it takes- EXP, EXP. but it will read all other files too. Hmm. Look oh. at that. Yeah. That's pretty great. So if you download the wrong one, you might be okay. Um, okay, so now we've embroidered the whole thing. We're just going to take this off. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the water soluble. The the tape stuff is great. Which brand did you use here? Um, I just grabbed the Kimberbell paper tape. The Kimberbell. Um, yeah, it's awesome. Great. So it just pulls off. So this is water soluble stabilizer. We are not going to use water to soluble it. Got it. Because that just <laughs> makes a gooey mess in the, in the nap. Got it. Yeah, okay. exactly. Okay, I have a question coming okay. up. I don't understand. Uh, okay. Are you using the yellow bobbin holder? We are not. We could. Um, the yellow bobbin case is the, the yellow version of this. It's the standard bobbin case that comes on all the Bernina's. Um, it's the same bobbin case for sewing and embroidery. Excuse me, not every single model, but most of our product line is now this bobbin case. We do sell a yellow version of this for embroidery. It's set to a higher tension. Um, there's nothing wrong with this one. Mm -hmm. You can use it for embroidery. I know a lot of my customers embroider solely on their machine. Mm -hmm. So they invest in the yellow high tension bobbin. Got case, it. Rather than maybe needing to manipulate this one or fix their tension. On Got it. One. Got it. But for what so, we did today, it, it worked well. Right. And that's something else that would be fixed in that whole testing it out thing mm -hmm. is that you'd be able to tell if your um, tension was wrong. We actually have, so we didn't talk about this at the beginning. We actually have a video that the entire thing is really just about embroidery. That's a great one, and I, I can't remember the name for it, but it's like, you know, tips for embroidering on cuddle. And so if you look on our Sew Together Tuesday, you'll find that one. You'll find that in the playlist on YouTube, which is fabulous, because I think we talked for an hour and a half. We talked with, um, I want to say, it was Sheila from um, Designs by Baby, and I want to say it was Mike Johns uh, from Baby Lock. And so oh, yeah. we talked a bunch about just embroidery in general and all about the stabilizers and how to tell if your tension is right and all of this stuff. So if you are new at all to embroidery, that's a great place to start, even if you're just new to cuddle embroidery. So uh, no knockdown stitch on no knock this down design stitch. at all. So I'm going to turn this around so you yes. can see it right. Okay, so if I were to do this again, here's my take on it. If I were to do this again, I would do my the C bigger. What anything you would do different? You could always double up the water soluble if mm -hmm. you had something really fluffy or a design that maybe wasn't as filled in or maybe something you didn't manipulate the density on. Right. Um, you can double up. Because I feel like this was pretty good. I don't see any stuff coming through it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but it does hide in the the, the fluff hide. just a little bit. The, yeah. the hide, right? Because the hide is multi-directional. Like some right. of it, 
folds away and some of it comes over. Right, exactly. So we'll talk about what you can do about that in just a second. So the back, if you remember, is cut away because that's what we want to use. So when I first started, I definitely, <clears throat> excuse me, I always wanted to use the tear away because it was easier. And like we talked about, it gets all of the stabilizer out and so much better. It really does pull and tug on the stitches in the fabric and makes it not look great. So we want to use a cutaway. And everybody I know who does a lot of cuddle embroidery suggests this. So, so all it does is it sticks, but you can see I can pull it off really easily. It doesn't leave any residue. It doesn't leave a residue. It's not hard to pull up. Okay. And they have special scissors that you can use that are maybe more adequate. Oh, like the duckbill kind of swoopy? Yeah, and I, you wouldn't necessarily have to use that for this, but, you know, you could. It's still stuck. Hold on. I'm trying not to cut the fabric, too. That's always helpful. That's the tear part. It's the only tearing you can do is when you're tearing off the extra. Okay. All right. So if I remember correctly, Sheila says I'm supposed to cut it about a quarter of an inch away or so. Oh, here's more trash. Would you mind? Awesome. Not Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So one of the things about a good stabilizer is that it won't, you won't feel it very much. And that's really important is you don't see the edge and that sort of thing. So because I'm, be a little bit, um, let's see about some things. I like kind of add a little curve so things aren't too sharp. So I don't know how necessary that is, but I don't like the sharp edges. Okay, so just try to round it out just a little bit. Turn it over. There we go. And it's a little bit stiffer here, but it's fine. Got it. Okay. And so honestly, that'll probably soften up as you use it. It'll soften too, up right? as you wash it. So every time that you wash it, that stuff gets softer and softer. All right. Okay. Does that seem all good? It does. Okay. So let's talk about how you can mess this up. All right. So Lucy's going to get rid of this machine because we're going to bring in the serger. And I'm going to show you how to finish it on the serger. Um, but we're going to bring in some other samples. So are we ready for that? Okay. All right. So I have my little trash back here. So we have a whole bunch of stabilizers here to talk about. I'm going to move these. So when I ask for those, Lucy, when I'm like, what did I do with the fabric? There it is. Okay. <laughs> so this is the stuff that we use today is this stable stick. All right. That is a cutaway version. And you can see there are different colors. Is it red? Is that what it is? Yep. Red and purple, correct? I yes. can't see it now. <laughs> so red and purple, I'm going to change this, um, are the difference between tear away and cut away. So make sure that you're looking at that because that's important. Okay. It depends on how, or like it makes a difference in how it, how you deal with it. Uh, those are the threads that we used. So this is what we use. This is what we recommend. So not this one, right? So not the tear away. Not the tear away. You want the cut away. This is... The stitch H2O, this is the water-soluble stabilizer. You want to use this, okay? There's also this, which is a heat away. So we'll talk about that too, all right? So let me grab my little sample. So this one is, this is the water-soluble, okay? So this one pulls up really nicely. This one is the heat soluble, heat soluble, is that what it is? Uh, one. I don't love this one. It's a little bit harder for me to get out. You can, if it, uh, you can't get all the little bits and pieces out, you can heat it from the back to get the rest of it out, but we recommend that you just pull all this stuff, okay? So this one was done without any stabilizer or topper at all, okay? So this is the... Heat dissolvable, this is the water dissolvable. And this is none. So you can see what a big difference it is. Let me take the rest of that out so you can see the difference between them, okay? So this right here is really just because of the nap and it didn't get caught down, just kind of folded back over it. This one does that the whole time, okay? The nap really messes with that when there's no topper. So the topper is really important, okay? That was the the point there. 
So this was, um, so I, I have to give a shout out to Sheila for helping me with all of these little samples that we're talking about today. So this one is done with a embroidery that is straight out of her machine. This is the way that she likes to do it. This is a cutaway based it onto the fabric with 505 spray. Then the topper is put on there. She pins it in place. You can tape it in place. Do it. This one works really nicely. Let's go ahead and take that topper off because I feel like that's when it that's when it shines. Okay. This one works really nicely with the cuddle, even though it's got these little bitty flowers on it because of the, the size of it, really. If you were going to do just the little bitty flowers, that would not work very well with the cuddle. Okay, but because so much of that is held down, you're okay. I think. Okay, and that looks really, that's super nice. Mm -hmm. All right, this is one that I did out of my machine. Okay, I'm going to do the same. We'll see how this one works. So this one is done on a cuddle three, which will definitely hide more. So this is, I wanted to show you this because this is what happens when you use the topper is it's great, but then it gets in these little bitty places. So if you watch very much, you know how much I love my Biani stiletto. And this is great for this. But this is the one part that I'm like, oh, those little parts are pain in there. It's probably a better phrase for that, sorry. <laughs> You're just going to have to kind of pick all those out. When you have these small ones, this is where the nap can get a little bit, um, I guess, in the way. So on this Cuddle 3, you can see that it, um, it kind of will pop up a little bit around the stitches, but not too badly. But if you were doing this with a Lux Cuddle, you'd really be in trouble. Like all of this would be long naps that were coming out. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So... This would be a fancy enough stitch that the cuddle three is really the highest loft that you want to do it on. Okay. So this we're talking about is like trying to figure out like, which do we want to do and what are we trying to make happen with our design? All right. So here's another example of a pretty little font. So this is, do you know, the font on that one, or it's do just, we just the one that was not in, opened up that can of worms. <laughs> uh, well, a lot of them, I don't know. This is just one that came standard in my machine. This is one that came standard in her machine. Got it. There's a bunch of them that they'll do that. This one has had four, six different fonts. Yeah. Has a bunch of different fonts. So they're always like basic ones. And then there are some places that you can actually buy fonts. We'll talk about that a little bit. Okay. And uh, if Sheila's here, she can pop in with names of fonts too. So let's talk about a knockdown. So a knockdown stitch, we talked about it a bunch in that other video and how you can do them yourself. But this is important to understand. This is the same. The gold is the same font. This one is done with a knockdown stitch, a bi-directional knockdown stitch, which means that it stitches it one way, it stitches it the other way, and holds that nap down really well. All right, and makes the letters really clear. If you do it without a knockdown stitch and it's a fine little font, it doesn't look the same at all. Okay, it just kind of loses it in there. So this is another great example of testing it out because if you test this out on a piece of fabric and you realize this is what it's going to look like, you're going to be frustrated if you've done that on the blanket because nobody wants to take out all those stitches. <laughs> yeah, in fact, you, you don't. You I just, wouldn't. I would make the blanket shorter. <laughs> That's what I would do. <laughs> like, like, look, it's wah, a little smaller. Wah, it's a throw. <laughs> it's a throw now. All right. So this one. Oh, yeah. Um, this one was... I have to look at the paper. Sorry. She told me. I want to remember what it was exactly. Very nice basting box. 505 spray. Knockdown. The wrong stabilizer. Yeah. So this is a tear away. That's what I wanted to make sure. So this is a tear away. So it'll tear really easily, which is nice. Okay. But what happens is. You can hear it. Uh, we can hear it. Okay. So what happens is I can tear all of this out. This has a, has a basting box in it. I'm going to throw away all these samples and they're going to have my name all over everything. It's super weird. I just realize that. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to do this to here. All right. So now, so this is what we think we want is that it would just tear right up to the design, right? And we only have the tear away in here. 
But what happens when we do that is this will still make noise in here and it's really stiff. So can you see how stiff that is? Got it. So All right. That, that even more than the cutaway changes the, the, the hand of the fabric. Right yeah. Now. So this stay, this is, this will end up being softer because it gets, well, that would probably get softer with time, but it'll end up still being slightly crunchy in here because of it. Okay. All right. So you want to make sure that you're not using a tear away. The other thing that what happens is that when you do this tearing thing, because we have the knockdown stitch, it's probably not going to really do it. We have some other examples, but you can see it gets, it'll get weirder along that edge. Okay, because when you're tearing it, it starts pulls to pull the fabric. The, pull the fabric over yep, that. exactly. Okay, so there's those. Here's another one. This one is with a heat soluble one, if I remember correctly. Um, it's the, uh, yeah, it's two layers of it. And then, or yeah, two layers, I think. Hold on. Right. Okay, that's what it was. So this one, you can see the, the, uh, and it doesn't pull out super easily. You see where it got caught under here? So because this is a heat away one and we're not supposed to use heat with this, then you'll end up having, you have this little plastic, you see the plastic under there, the little shine. You can see it in person really well. No, I, I, I guess I can kind of see it. The there. little shine that's in there, that's actually the plastic that's underneath it. It's not the thread. It's the plastic that's still under there. Gotcha. Okay, so that doesn't really come out. It just stays in there. I'm like it causes it to be a little weird what did sheila say there anything i need to know no nope, no i think we're i think I missed I'm like what did i do what did i do it's okay it does look better but you can see the little shine under there and it won't go away because it's heat resistant and so you're not going to iron this to get it to go away because we don't iron on the front of cuddle right we iron on the back of cuddle i need to interrupt yeah Something what because happened? of possibly the, the internet? what's going on with the internet and how it, my phone is struggling with it has okay. absolutely tanked my battery and okay. we are at thirteen percent. I okay. need to actually go get a, a backup battery for the camera okay. phone and uh, a cord, and I will be back in two shakes of a lamb's tail. Okay. You are, gonna... are on your own. I'm on my own. It's okay. Okay. <laughs> here we go. So here, this is another good example of like I can't tell which letter is which. This is a this is the T and this is the L and this is the C. I can't actually tell, but it's very hard to tell. So knowing my initials now, I'm like, why did I tell her to do that? <laughs> this one is the knockdown stitch. This is what it looks like when it does the knockdown stitch. This is without a knockdown stitch, and you can see it just hides it in there. It also was pulled badly um, because it wasn't um, basted down. So that's one of the things you can see how it pulled the, the stabilizer and puckers it up. Okay. So the one of the things you saw, I was pulling the stitches out, was over here with this basting box, which is hidden, hidden deep in here. Okay. And it's just a big stitch that goes all the way around. And the basting box is actually super duper helpful for keeping the fabric where we want it to be and keeping it taut in the actual, uh, look how well that worked, um, in the actual hoop. Okay. All right. I think that was all of our things. Like I said, go back and check that other video on YouTube. It's a ton of information in there. And it's not just me talking when I, you know, only know a little bit about what I'm talking about. Also, getting a thread that matches is super helpful. Look at how well that matches. How do you know if a font has knockdown stitch in it? It will tell you. In. Okay. Great. So um, most of the time they do not. Um, as far as I know, there are a couple of ways that you can do it. Some machines will um, add, you can add a knockdown to the stitching. You can also, there's um, the one program that I know of is in Brilliance Enthusiast. Hopefully he'll put it up there. There's um, an Imbrilliance uh, video or uh, an Imbrilliance program that you can actually do the knockdown stitches in. So you import your font, you do a knockdown stitch, you increase it, you decrease it, you do whatever you want to to create. Um, enthusiast. Enthusiast. You were you. correct. Um, but you you can make your own uh, knockdown stitch around the design. So that's really important when you're doing the Lux Cuddle. It's very helpful if you do that. The other thing you can do if you can't, you can buy knockdown stitches also from other designers. So they will sell them like in a circle or squares or ovals, that sort of thing. And then you could do that on your shape, then do your monogram on that. 
Okay. So there are ways of being able to manipulate it. When you're doing a Lux cuddle, it's important that you do that sort of thing or a very big font that will stand out of the nap. Okay. Super duper important. You could also do it on, where's the pink one? Oh, here's the pink one. We were talking about this. So you could do something like this, cut an oval of it. And if you were doing that, like on a gray blanket, then you could blanket stitch this down and put it onto the Onto the blanket. Does that so make sense? You, you, you could, could, you could embroider on a uh, C3 and then uh, applique that. Right. On. Exactly. So, so you could just use the embroidery as an applique to put it on there. I would always suggest that you do the applique or embroidery before you put your blanket together. Okay. So <laughs> we joked about it yesterday. What does it look like on the backside? Like crap. So don't do that. Okay. Do it before you put it together. Sorry. <laughs> I hope you still like me. Oh, okay. I do. Okay, good. I was hoping like, they do too. Yeah. You guys still like me. Okay. It doesn't look oh, nice. Yours not be. <laughs> it doesn't look nice when you embroider on the, you know, and the back side is just the other side of your blanket. <laughs> so if worse comes to worse, that's what you have to do. All right. So now we're doing all right. Okay. Yeah. So now we're going to put our blanket together. So if we've embroidered it, we figured out all this stuff. We got our embroidery on there, right? The way that we want our monogram to look. Then we can put it together, right? Yeah. All right. So we're going to put it together. If you want to see a whole big thing about how to do this throw, bit by bit by bit, then you can watch the video for the Lux throw that we did at the quilt shop last July. There's some insight on how to find it. Um, also, we have a, uh, if you go to the YouTube and you go to Sew Together Tuesday, you'll find it. Or also, if you go to the, what do you call them, playlists on how to make blankets or throws, you'll be able to find it in there too. Okay, so there are other other ways of finding it. All right, look at how well those are going to go together. So nice. So if I ever needed 12 blankets with my initials on them, I now have mm. I love it. I love it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I've got some pins. I'm moving them out of my way. I have, actually, I'm going to hand you these guys because we have a lot of stabilizers here. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll come back and make a blanket <laughs> I just wanted to make sure you guys got to see all this stuff because for me it was really confusing when I was like I don't know what to buy um, so one of the companies was nice enough to send me a bunch of stuff but they sent me like one of everything and I had no idea what to do with any of it anyway so really what you want to do cut away so cut away and the sticky is really good and then a water soluble stabilizer all right all right, so here's my blanket. So I'm just doing a quarter size one today. We can do this obviously full size. Um, you could do all sorts of things on here. So you could put a baby's name and the day they were born. You could put an anniversary date, monogram, all of that good stuff. Okay. Look, I think I did okay. The nap. Oh, with fine. the nap. Whew. Yeah. I was lucky. All right. Girl. All right. So this one is a snowy owl is weird. Um, I say that with all the love because I think it's absolutely beautiful, but it is a little like, which way? And what if I can't tell the difference, Hawk? Does it doesn't matter. matter. Somebody <laughs> in the audience, somebody in the audience got us. <laughs> and Hawk took a breath, so I answered. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Doesn't matter. Okay. So I'm going to feel these. They feel fine. Yeah. Yeah, they feel fine. All right. So I like to start at the top with these. It doesn't really matter there either, but that's what I do. So I'm going to turn this, I'm going to pin it. Um, do we, so we're going to put this together with a serger. How exciting is that? So oh, yeah. Everybody keeps asking me. Part two of this show is. Here comes the serger. We're using all the fancy, fancy equipment today. It's pretty exciting. So people always ask, can you use the serger with this? Yes, you can use the serger with cuddle. Do I? Not very often. Um, and especially now, because I don't have a serger with me. But when I was at home, I did definitely use my serger, but not a lot on cuddle. So you can. Are we going to pin this? Are we going to clip this? We pin this way, you know, the, the Shannon way mm -hmm. with cuddle will be fine. Okay, because yeah. we're going to, it'll be far enough away yeah. that oh, we're wait, not going to get. Yep. Perfect. Who knew I was doing it the right way the whole time? Look at that. Okay, what can I do with my pins? Okay. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mark, I'm going to pin a corner and a corner. 
And these are just um, pieces that I cut in half. So we're going to hope that they're pretty darn close. Um, one of the things about mixing the two fabrics is our fabrics are 58 to 60 inches wide, which means one could be 58 and one could be 60. So I could cut these in half and one is 29 inches and one is 30 inches. So I'm just going to see if I can get these to fit and they look like they're pretty good. All right, but it's something to keep in mind. So for me, when we're doing the throw classes, a lot of times I tell people when they're first starting out to choose two fabrics that are the same because then you end up having um, the same exact width. Okay, so just something to keep in mind is if you use two different fabrics, you might have to fight it just a little. All right, so how do we have the serger set up today, we're Lucy? For a four thread overlock. And I can put the blade down. Okay. Come around. We need the blade. Come around. Okay. We could have the blade up and it would cut. Right. So that's the thing is I always put the blade down. Okay. So can you show how, how you did that again? Yes. On this just machine, so um, it's over here on the side. Okay. So it's real simple. We just park the blade down. And so if you, if you look in here, do it again. There we'll see go. that come up, up, down, up, and then down. Yeah. Okay. Got it. So that means that it won't cut the edge as I'm pushing this through, which is kind of the, the perk of a serger in a lot of ways is it'll cut off. It'll neaten your edge as you go through. Mm -hmm. When you're doing it with cuddle and especially Lux cuddle, it just mm -hmm. makes more of a mess. So honestly, that's why I don't use, that's why I don't use the, um, the blade with it. Cause it just is, it's a mess. Um, as much as I love cuddle, I try to make less mess with it, not more. Okay. All right. So now what are we going to do? We've got it set up for a four thread. Yes. Um, we're at the smallest width. Okay. Because it's all, we got pretty close here. Mm -hmm. But we could pull them out as we approach the foot. Okay. Um, so I can go ahead and put the foot down and then just lift here and foot controls plugged in, ready to go. Okay. It'll start slow at first. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to lift this and put my fabric yep. under. Oh, how fancy. Okay. And then you just pull out the pens before they. Yes. There we go. Yeah, I was um, yeah, smart enough to do that with my first one. I the first thing I did was cut through a pin. Was not a good idea. <laughs> okay. There we go. Oh. By the way, it's probably going to race. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Searchers do that. Okay, so I've got a, I've got a little, a little catch here. Oh, I see. There's a thread around the foot. Yeah. You get it pulled out. It. Okay. Thanks. All right, so I'm going to take this. So this pin is here. I want to make sure you take that out long before. Okay. Did you do anything with the differential? I did not. Okay. So it's just it's just working its way. Can, yeah. Totally fine. So we'll talk about um, the differential in just a second. We'll see how this is working. So I will tell you that this is one thing that I have learned with uh, using the serger with Cuddle before on other projects is that if I go a little bit slower, it's better. Um, I'm going to take it fast and we'll see what happens. So I love surges because they're fast, but also they're fast. <laughs> so if they scare you. Does this have a speed control where you can, you can slow it we down? Can set the min or the max speed on it. Yes. On it. So if you know that you're using heavier material, slippery material, and you need to go slow, you can tell the that. To not let you go too fast. Right, right. <laughs> Got it. Okay. And then we've got the cover over here. All right. So this is how it worked. Okay. See that side because that'll be easier to see. Oh, it looks All great. right. So that looks really nice. It doesn't look like it pulled it any weird way at all, even when I was kind of trying to zip a little bit. All right. That's great. All right. So let's do another side. So you did the top first. This mm -hmm. is this is your order of operations, right? This is right? my order of operations. And somebody asked me the other day if it made a difference if you left the hole on the side or on the bottom. I always do top, side, side, bottom, leave the hole there. It doesn't really matter. Well, it gives you the opportunity to kind of, that, that last side, you can re-square it. Right. So this one, I'm going to pin a little bit less. I'm going to make sure that I pin a little further away from the edge so I don't have to try to stop and take them out because if i can be a lead foot i'm gonna be a lead foot <laughs> and this is the selvage edge at least on the one uh it's the selvage edge on the one so it should cut out um it won't cut it off but it'll come right along here so what i might want to do let's see it looks like it's okay it's one of those things with the selvages it's always kind of um uh, you know how does it look they don't always look perfect this one looks fine enough that if that's if my seam is here even though that's still in the middle of the selvage, this edge right here is still in the middle of the selvage. It looks fine. Got it. Okay. 
So I'm just going to pin that. I'm trying to pin it fairly evenly there. Okay. And I didn't pin it perfectly, or it didn't cut it perfectly even. Shocking, because I pinned it and cut it on a picnic table. I'm shocked I couldn't get it perfect. <laughs> All right. At least the wind wasn't too bad that day. All right. Are you going to come around? Okay, so this one, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push this over so it's coming right to the edge. This, if I wanted to, this would be an example of when you might want to cut it because you'd get that off. I'm going to see if I can just shove it up. Okay, now that Lucy moved away, I'm going to be like, let's see what we can do. What can you get away with? <laughs> so it pulls that over. Bink. But smushes it in. Okay. Okay. It's just going to power through this. It's pretty great. So this little cup right here will catch all your scraps if you were doing it um, and having the blade up. Okay, so this is one of the things I was seeing that I was wondering if it would do before and it didn't do it surprisingly on the stretchy side, but it is doing it now, is it pushes it just a little. So I kind of have to keep it taut a little more. So you can see it start to build up just the tiniest little bit. All right. Okay. Yep. But with it's just such a tiny bit that I don't really care. I'm just going to make it feed in. So that's one of the things we were talking about. It's like, did you change anything with the differential? So the differential, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, is basically what causes the two fabrics to work together. So it's kind of like the walking foot on your sewing machine is that your walking foot will help the top come. This doesn't have anything to make the make it come along necessarily it's really the bottom so the differential will help it so that they can do the length. and that sometimes has to happen if you're using a thick fabric or if you're using a really thin fabric or if you're using a stretch fabric Linda White just called it the four, called it four-wheel drive for right, surgeries yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> perfect okay so it's really technically in tech terms it's the relationship between the back feed dog speed and the front feed dog speed so i can right because yeah let's do that because this is something that gets asked about sometimes and i know yeah so there's so, two different feed dogs on surgery dog system so if you increase differential feed this back one's going to move faster than the front one and it will either cause a wavy fabric to flatten or cause the flat fabric to be wavy whatever you need to achieve on the surgery oh, right wow. so so generally they're moving the same speed yes, right now they are right and so if you're having if it's having a hard time catching up or stretching or whatever you change that yeah. also another time you get to practice yeah yeah <laughs> get and make sure it's that. right you could actually kind of use that to ease two pieces together too right yes. it's like intention intentionally yes it's, it's what you can like pleading yeah it's what you can do to kind of gather things gathering yeah i got it and here on Look the screen it's real words. simple it's on the same um page as our stitch length so here we can change the stitch length and over here we can manipulate our differential feed Yellow means we've made a change. If we don't want it, we just clear it back to factory. Say finished. There we go. Okay, mm. now I'm gonna like because you know I like to experiment, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, how do I put the foot down? There we go. Um, because I like to experiment, I'm gonna do it sans pins. What? Yeah, because this is the way I like to surge. Now you're getting crazy. I am. We'll see how it works. I got stuck again. Okay. There we go. So I'm just going to keep these together. So really what I do, come down here and look at my hand. So when I'm surging, this is what I do on everything is I keep a finger in between and I can kind of keep an even pressure on these. So this is the lengthwise of the grain because this is the selvage. This is this. So I can, I can't only stretch it so much. All right. But I'm just trying to keep them even. And that's what I do whenever I'm surging. The other thing you need to make sure when you're surging, especially if you have the blade down, is that nothing is getting caught underneath the foot. Weird. Have you ever cut a hole into something? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Lucy laughed. No. Yes. No, she's laughing at you. That yeah. never happens. Never. <laughs> yeah. Surgeries are kind of fun that way. They can definitely, uh, yeah, stick holes in things you didn't intend. Listen to it purr. It's great. Um. That's pretty amazing. It's pretty great. Like, okay. seriously, you didn't pin that. 
Is what? Pin it. I know. Isn't that nitty? All right. Any, okay. Anybody who's thinking about making a lot of blankets. This would be probably, a way that you, you could do it. You're probably wanting to pay okay. attention to this right now. So this is the one that I didn't, <laughs> I didn't pin at all. This is the one I did pin. And I don't know how straight the cut is, but you can see it didn't get way off when, because the differential was feeding it through at the right time. Okay. So I will tell you that this is not just because it's a serger, but because it's a quality serger that it will, that differential will make a big difference. So if you're, you know. Don't try that necessarily on a cheap serger. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's got to have the, the differential. Feeding through, right. The not feeding not through all surgers do. Got it. Yes, exactly. So okay. just, just a, you know, fair warning. Okay. All right. So now we've got this. So normally when I do a throw, I'm going to stick a hand hole in here and I'm going to do a straight line of stitching. If I had this in the sewing room, I would have my other machine still here and I could do a straight stitch and a straight stitch and it's fine. We're just not going to do that today. Okay. Oh, right. You're, you're stay stitch in the L brackets. Right. Exactly. Okay. And if we were in like a real sewing room, we would have that available. We don't. It's fine. It'll be beautiful anyway. It's just my blanket. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start that baby up again. Okay, we're going to we're going to try this without it on the stretchy side and see what happens. And I'm definitely going to go a little slower cuz I can you can see it build up a little bit. So I'm just going to take my time with it and not try to race it, which I could do on the not stretchy side a little bit more. There's no place for the extra to go now. Right. Right, exactly. <laughs> we're just going to get to the middle. We're going to shove it in there here. Okay. So I'm just going to sew right off the edge. Is that what you yep. would do? Yep. Okay. So I'm to make sure. I'm not the expert here. We've enabled you as the expert. Okay, Lucy? <laughs> We're taking you on the road. Happy to be here. <laughs> All right. We're going to need so, a bigger bus. We're gonna need <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I just realized, like, this is why I always say don't. Don't necessarily do it this way, because if I do this and it starts to pucker here, I end up with a weird thing over here in the corner. But you so could gonna, herd them into the middle, couldn't you? So I'm going to herd it to the middle. Yep. God. So I'm just going to start at the other end and get that to go where I want it to go. Okay. And then then when you hand stitch the turning hole, you have room to... to I can make it. it. I can make it go where I want to go. Okay. So I'm going to see. I got a little extra happen in there. Bink, bink. Okay. So I'm just going to gather that in. Now, if I wanted to change the differential in this in the middle of it, could I? Yes. Okay, let's do that. Can we make the bottom pull a little faster? We want to increase that. We'll see if we can make this work. Yep, there we go. Nice work. Oh, wow. <laughs> and done. You. Okay. To say. So there's the there's the little turning hole. So if I were doing this normally in a sewing room, I would have a stitching line here. Okay. And what that does is if you haven't seen Sew Together Tuesday before, we add that little line because it'll give me a nice turning line. Right now I have no idea where my seam allowance should be. So my bottom will kind of be a little wobbly probably when I sew it. Okay. So now you ready? We're just gonna turn this inside out. Find those corners. Just gonna pop them out. Okay, so I like to push the corners <laughs> oh, in. Oh, getting a serger tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> That's a comment. <laughs> yeah, I was a long time that I wanted a serger, and then I was like, oh, no, I don't need a serger. I don't need a serger. And then I finally bought a serger, and I bought just, you know, a really basic one. And then it literally sat in the box for a year and a half before I was like, I don't know. I don't know what to do with it. And finally I did. And then, yeah, I've been yeah. sold ever yeah. since. Like, sergers are great. And it's not just for clothing, but all sorts of things. If you're going to do scarves, this would be the fastest way oh to do the gosh. scarves, too. So oh, my gosh. Okay. So now you can see I've got the corners turned out. At this point, I need to make sure, like, I'll go back and use my little stiletto and pop out all of those little fibers that get caught in there. Make these edges look really nice. Now, we used a four-thread over or um surging on here overlock that um will hold it better so you want to make sure that you're using a four thread not a three thread for that because it will actually give like a seam line and the surging we didn't really show that but i want to show you real quick 
Okay, so this is the little, this is the extra stitching line. It'll kind of do it because it does one up here, right? Yeah. yeah. So you can sort of see it on here. There's a stitching line here and a stitching line here. There's two of them. Okay, so that this is actually like your seam line. We'll make, give it a really nice, nice seam. Otherwise, it'll tend to pop. That's what will happen. You'll see searching where it opens up and it's because they used a three thread. So this is a polyester thread. Yes. Yes. Yeah. For the serger, yes. designed specifically for yes. the serger. This is by Mettler. I see it. Maxi lock. Got yep. it. There you go. Yep. So you want to use, um, they use a cert, um, it's kind of like quilting that you want to use a polyester thread for it because the polyester thread is stronger. Yep. So using it in the serger will make it stronger as you're doing all this fast sewing and it's not going to pop. Which okay. is also great for cuddle because it's a knit fabric. Right. Okay. It just works so out. So now look at that. Wham, bam. We have a nice little blanket. If I can find my course look at this fourth corner that's where the monogram is of course all right so there is my little monogram blanket now what do we need to do we need to top stitch it all right, all right so she's going to show me how to top this, stitch this guy. Serger top stitches yes so we're a combination of uh, overlock <laughs> and cover stitch so we're going to go ahead and switch this over get this set up this, part so this is what I have too, is one that does a cover stitch and the serging. And it's so fabulous because you can do so much. Like literally I've sewn, like, which is what we'll do here is the entire project. You just sew it what, right yeah. on this machine. And it's the change fabulous. is easy. Um, some older model machines, changeover might not have been so easy. So we're going to swap this out. Um, this is the top of the line combination machine. So it's actually going to... Walk us through how to make the changes on the machine if we're not an expert. There is a guided mode and the machine will tell you what to do. And I am not an expert, so that's great. <laughs> do you want a two thread chain stitch? Yes. Okay, let's go into cover stitches, select our two thread chain stitch. Machine knows where we were previously, so it's going to walk us through everything to do to switch over from the four thread overlock we were using to the two thread chain stitch. So. Fabulous. Step, unthread everything. <laughs> Our favorite part. Fill the thread. Clip here. Clip the needles. Pull all of that out. Okay. Did she right. catch that? She didn't pull it from up here. Yeah. Always okay. in the direction yep. of the needle. Um, attach the <laughs> different parts of the There it goes. Just throw it on the floor. It's a good place for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's, you just got wrapped up in her and I's snarky attitudes <laughs> about dropping stuff. So don't take that personal. Oh, okay. no. At least I didn't have to take any stitches out yet today. So that's great. We're going to remove the needles from their position in the overlock and put them in the cover stitch position. And you always, any surgery you have when you remove the needle, you've got to tighten your set screws or else they're going to be lost. Just Yeah, and it will happen. Yeah. Like if you're not really careful, the, the screws will fall loose. I it's had the machine back very here true. one time and I walked it up front and the screws were gone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so be very careful. Yeah. They're like so basically gonna, like they, eyeglasses screws. They're like yeah, really yeah. small. We've deactivated the knife. We're going to adjust our width to five. And it does walk you through all of this. So through everything. And um, don't feel we like you have to remember all of it. No, we could hit the video and the machine will show us exactly what it's telling us to do. It's like a YouTube right on your machine. Right there. Wow. Built in. So this is the only overlocker in the market that has that touch screen. Um, we also have one. The 860 is overlock only. So it doesn't have this fancy cover stitch feature that we're about to do, but it does all the overlock steps. Going to deactivate this upper looper, park him down. We don't need him today. And then roll cam is set. Okay, now we thread, which actually, let me put that back up for a second. Now I've switched on my air threader. So now when I hit the foot control, I've got power and I can air thread. And just like that, <laughs> it will be threaded. Which is really the part that people don't do sergers for. Oh, yes. People right? get so upset about having to thread their loopers. Well, because one of the things with, with threader or with sergers that don't do the air threading is that you have to 
do them in a certain order. Yeah. And that was something I didn't realize that if you don't thread it in the right order, it's not going to sew right. Right. So that's kind of the nice thing, right? With this is you just put it in, it threads it, any, it does any it how you order. Want. Does it matter if you start with the needles, do the loopers last? Um, also, if you drop a stitch or if you run out, something happens to your thread, you can rethread just that one and not the whole right. thread or whatever, right. like everything else. So right. then we're going to thread our chain looper. Come across here. Chain up, back down, and do the right chain. This is so far over my pay grade. <laughs> <laughs> wow. There we go. Send that to the back. Say, okay, I'm finished. And now, just like that, we're set up for cover stitching. Okay, so two minutes to switch it over. Right. So which with um, a camera in the way. With a camera in the way. <laughs> so what needle is in there? Um, this, I believe, is a 9014 steel. But um, this machine okay. takes the ELX cover stitch needles. It's a serger system of needles. Okay. Um, they are made by Schmetz too. This. This is the one that came with the machine, so it says Bernina, but Schmitz makes our Bernina needles, so same difference. Nice. Um, and it has an additional scarf in the back and the front. Okay. So that the needle is more flexible when it's going through the machine. Got it. All right. So I'm going to clip and pin just a couple things more, and then you're going to show me how to make this work. We're going to top stitch this baby. See how that goes. So I want to make sure that my edges are even. So that's what I've been trying to do here is while she's been busy changing, I'm over here clipping and pinning. So really what I'm trying to do is keep my edges even and get a pin far enough away that as I go, oh shoot, there we go, <laughs> that it's going to keep it nice and flat along the edge. Because that's really the part that you'll be able to see. So this is what I'm curious about. Because for anybody who's made a bunch of throws, this is the part that it can get a little bit wonky. So sewing around the four edges, super easy. Once you do the top stitching, I want to make sure that these don't stretch mm -hmm. and get a weird thing. So we're going to try it and see what happens. Okay. That's my theory on all of this. Is we just try it, see what happens. All right. So, so we should probably activate the needle down on the machine. Let's that do way that. You pivot. Yep. Um, and we want to start with the fabric under the needle. Okay. And when, when we're in cover stitch, we want to make sure fabric is under our needle to support the stitch to begin. Mm -hmm. When you're overlocking, you you don't need anything under the needle. You right. Just sail right into it. And this is my seam allowance, which is great because now I can I can add a bigger border, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's totally fine. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this to a two by turn this like yep. is there a, it's a turner thing there, there we go sorry okay so because i'm just guesstimating where my edge is but i know that i want to be this far in i'm gonna twist oh that's a pretty good guesstimate Fabulous. okay I'm switch it <laughs> just tiny. it's almost like you've been doing this for a minute i might know what two inches is yeah okay so there i've got it i put my foot down mm -hmm. and now i'm just gonna stitch there you go all right see how this works how big is my stitch length? Stitch length right now is three. Um, we can change that. And I can tell that by Just this here. There. Yep, right? that's where it okay. says three. Well, three is perfect. Make sure my pins come out. Get this guy up on the table again. Yeah, those extra wide seam allowance guys. Everybody's really excited about that. Yeah, that's great. Because honestly, yeah, that's usually a piece of blue tape on the side of my machine. So tell me what the, so I'm stitching from what I'm considering the right side because that's where I did the monogram. So what is it, how is it actually stitching? It's not a bobbin, correct? Right. It is a chain looper. So there's, every overlocker has an upper looper and a lower looper. And when you look at an overlock stitch, that top thread is your upper looper. The bottom thread is your lower looper. Um, this machine has a third looper called the chain looper, and that is what is working with the top needle to create your stitch. So it's actually so, a chain stitch, not a traditional lock stitch like created with the bobbin and a needle. Got it. So with this one, we, we're using this kind of creamish um, thread for it. So over here, I can kind of see it, which is fine. If I wanted to hide that, I would just need to make sure that one of the threads and the machine... The, Right. It'll tell me which one is the top. Or mm -hmm. I'll know. Mm -hmm. um, so that one I would match to here. I'm just going to do it all in cream because that's totally fine with me. 
But if you want to hide your stitches, you just get matching thread. Yeah. Matching thread is, uh, I would say get coordinating thread and just gray is fine. Gray is fine for almost everything. But if you want to hide your stitches, you get matching thread. How do you think it looks? Beautiful. Are we doing all right? So what time are we at? Too. Yes, we're right. at 128. We're an hour and Great. a half. We're like still like, we have another hour if we were going to go as long as last or two weeks ago. We're never show. doing that again. <laughs> <laughs> that was a thing. That was, yeah. yeah. All right. Even with my battery hooked up right now, it's still actually, it's, it's just slowly uh, diminishing as opposed to like, falling off a cliff right so okay it, it, there is no way to do an hour-long show okay. with my phone it won't happen <laughs> okay. i can't plug it into a strong enough battery to make that work okay so i'm going to keep so if you can kind of back up just a little i'm just going to keep this nice and flat okay as i'm bringing this through to make sure that it doesn't want to push forward because if i do this it ends up stretching this and we'll push this forward so it's one of the things that people tend not to do is to hold it um as like much off the everything as I think you should. So really don't let it hang down, let it kind of um, be up in the air and let it work together a little better. Don't let the stretch get you. Okay, and you saw when I got to the corner, I just kind of eyeballed it as to where two inches might be. Did you just hear that new t-shirt? Don't what? let the stretch get you. Don't let the stretch get you. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just kind of eyeballing where I think two inches is, and then I'm going to pop up my foot, turn it, get right there, pretty good, okay, and then I'll just keep going. Okay, look at how nice that is. It's a great stitch. Yeah, that's fabulous. All right, we're almost there. What do I have? Two more signs? So let me see if I can sew a little faster and see what happens. I'm going to grab a pin. I just know it. And it's just plowing right along. It's bringing it. Did you, um, is the differential still at where it was before or does it reset when you did the cover stitch? It reset when I did the cover stitch. Okay. So that's just the default and that seems to be working just fine. I just oh, need so to the hold. the differential is still in play. Mm -hmm. Differential still in play, but it's definitely in the, um, the not generic, what do you call it? Default. Yeah. Okay. We're getting to the area that I didn't pin. So, oops. I'm going to get over to the corner. And then we'll do a little, a little extra clipping, et cetera. So I can get around that last edge. So I'm going to, um, I have that hole still open. And um, I will go back over and fix that, obviously, later and hand sew that shut. Or I'll walk around with a sample that has a hole in it for the rest of forever. Um, <laughs> we'll try. Here's the bottom, though, where I need to put that together. I'm just going to clip them along the edge, basically, so that they're together. Nobody asked how many Funky Friends Factory stuffies in the RV haven't had their their uh, oh, holes fixed there's a few <laughs> it's true i get to a point that i'm like all right and next project <laughs> yes my grandma's quilt is coming right along okay so this is where i can see it's starting to push forward so how can we fix that so my theory is that this is the way I would do it is that I would just take more time in doing it because we're trying to hurry. So I want to try to avoid this for other people. So what can we do? So we lifted the presser foot so we can, you know, that's not tight. Mm -hmm. and, um, we could also adjust presser foot pressure. We could loosen. Oh, that. which is just a brace. Right just a and you can do it while you're sewing. Handle right there. Yep. Oh, that's amazing. So the default's right. four. Let's take it to three and see what happens. And then okay. let's increase differential. See how that helps. Thanks for problem solving with me on the fly. Okay. Put, back. Put back down. Okay. I'm going to see if we can ease that in. Basically. We're going to see if we can ease it back in. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's, a, that's kind of a mountain. Maybe. It's not so much. For sure. That. Yeah. It's starting to go back in there. 
Okay. So part of this, I will tell you, part of it is because I didn't pin it the rest of the way. <laughs> so that was my fault. Oh, it's gone. Yeah. Here we go. Poof gone. So what if I wanted if I wanted that to get that to be um, perfect, what I would have done is changed the differential at the very bo at the at that corner mm -hmm. instead of getting to a point that it had like built up just a little and then be like, oh no, what do I do? So if I wanted to make it perfect, I would either realize that and then take some stitches out and start again. Okay. Um, how I'm not needled down. I don't know why. Oh, okay. So um, we have this tool for this. Okay. CS lock tool, cup okay. stitch lock tool. So we want to reach under and pull. And you pull that out mm -hmm. and then cut it yep. before you release the tension. Okay, that way is, it locks your chain. Stitch. This is what I know too. Yep. And then you okay, can go and then in you and pull cut it right here. There you go. And now it's locked. If we had just lifted the foot and pulled, it would have pulled out our stitch. So we have to right. get some thread right so got it I, yeah that's new i want to see if i can pull this so what do i do with this this thread that i started with or that i'm ending with is it okay if i just cut yeah. it yep it's locked now okay do i need to knot this yes you could knot that on the back but okay. that top one we can just cut okay so i'll make sure i'm doing it right it's funny because it's it's kind of like a car in that like you learn how yours works and then you get a different model and you're like oh Okay, it's mostly the same. Right, right. But there are these little features What's that are slightly <laughs> different. What's this button do exactly? This thing got a lot of buttons. It does. Okay, so I'm gonna clip that. There we go. So there is my little my little merp. Okay, that I will fix. And it's really because I didn't pin it, but it did even it out. So if I started it here, this is where it started to stretch because this is on the stretchy side, and I didn't pin it. Okay. But you can see it worked just fine everywhere that I pinned it. <laughs> so a lesson learned. Pin Do as you your say. fabrics. Okay. And I pinned in farther. So I did the wonder clip over here. I pinned in far enough that I didn't have to um, take these out as I was going. Now, when you're finished, if you want to, you can come along here and you can fluff all of this out. So on here, I, it was pretty easy to keep a straight stitch. If you struggle with it, this is a great place to like take this and make it so that you can't really see the seam very well. So you can't tell how straight your seam was. Okay, because one of the things is it will look totally crooked even when it's not. See how much straighter it looks on this side than that side? Yeah, and that's just because it's hide. It's just because of hide. Yeah. Okay. Got it. So when you're when you're making a blanket and you're freaking out because it doesn't look it doesn't look perfect, that's why. Okay. All right. Look at that cute little thing. We made a blanket, you guys. Ta-da. Ta-da. Yeah, we did it. It's a pretty good little blanket. I like it. All right. And I have like three more that I can make. So it's awesome. Can you right. hold up one side and I can hold up the other? Well, it's going to hang funny the at there. the bottom. Oh, well, you know. Because oh, it's, you know, it's okay. funny at the bottom. All right. Because I could fix it. So now I'm not going to show you. Okay. Now I'm... <laughs> Sorry. But I'll fix it and then maybe I'll post a picture of it. So okay. we learned a lesson. Remember, that's what I was trying. It's like, can I pin it? Do I have to pin it? Yes, you have to pin it. Okay. So when you're doing the co the cover stitch, I think because there's so much that's actually like freewheeling over there that it's a lot easier to build up than under the serger, which the um you're you're sewing this close to the edge versus this close to the edge. So you have a lot more wiggle room, literally when you're doing the top stitch. So the top stitch, make sure that you're pinning that carefully and doing your clips. So this would be another time. I don't have my big clips. I only had one, unfortunately. Now I've lost it completely. Um, it. The big wonder clips, oh, this would be a great time to use that, okay? So those are great for the top stitching. All right, so if you have a serger, if you don't have a cover stitch, you're just gonna top stitch this on your machine, but you can see how much faster it was to do all those side stitching with the serger. So if you have one, this is a great opportunity to use it. Don't just let it sit there in your sewing room. All right, um, okay, do we have a winner for our beginner box? <laughs> we'll wait for Michael to pop it up. We do. Okay. Shauna M. Shauna M. Thank you so much for watching, for sharing. We really appreciate it. Please contact us via Facebook Messenger and give us your name, your mailing address, phone number, all of that good stuff. And we will ship a beginner box out to you ASAP. Okay. Make sure that you watch again next week. So we'll keep doing this. Um, 
What other things do I have to tell them next week? Where we're we going? Right. This is what I have to tell you. Next week we will be, so tomorrow we're actually still here at um, Bobbin and Bolt. We'll be doing classes. So if you are in the local area and you didn't sign up, you can still come. Okay. So tomorrow we have classes. We're making an ottoman and a self-binding blanket, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Kids are available. Classroom is available. Come join us. It'll be super fun. Okay. Then next week we are moving to the west side of the state and we are going to Dayton, Virginia for Patchwork Plus. We'll also be doing a couple of Sew Together Tuesday and some workshops. Then from there, we head north, correct me if I'm wrong, Hawk, up to on May 10th, we'll be at Tomorrow's Treasures in Crofton, Maryland. And we're going to be joined with Parker on the Porch, who also does embroidery. And she does really cute embroidery designs. So we're going to be making a little zipper pouch that looks like s'mores. I'm very excited about that. With the sparkle. With the sparkle cuddles. Yeah. Yay. So you get to see how that works and see how soft it is, which is awesome. And there are kits available for that. So that'll be fun. Uh, and then we move up. We're going to have an online only. We're making slippers. Then we go to So What's New and Yarn 2 in Islip, New York, where we're making a robe. star pillow. Oh, no, star we're making pillow. a robe for class. Oh, sorry. sorry. We're making a star pillow for the show. And then... <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when you have so many classes going on. Uh, and then we have a week that we are doing my Lammy. So June 7th, 8th, and 9th, I believe, are the dates where we're making my Lammy. And that'll be online only because no store wants me to set up in their shop for three days. <laughs> it's a lot. And then we'll finish at Bits and Pieces up in Pelham, New Hampshire. And that one, we're making a self-binding blanket with cotton and cuddle. So that'll be super fun. We're going to combine those two um, two fabrics. That'll be great. So we have a great tour ahead of us. I hope you join us somewhere along the way. We'll be taking a break after that and we'll hit you in the Midwest and it'll be really fun. So join us next week. Make sure that you checked out, check out softerplace.org for um, information on our nonprofit. And what's the hand for? Are we finishing? Yeah. Okay. All right. Until next Put them week. Together. Happy sewing. <laughs>